head of um, minimal invasive gynecologic department and also the center of endometriosis. What I'm going to be talking about in this morning is the novel treatment in endometriosis, uh, both medical and surgical treatments. As you all know, we can maybe start with the, with the slides. Oh yeah, that's working. So as you all know, endometriosis is a benign gynecologic condition and uh, it can be defined as the ectopic presence of endometrial-like tissue outside the uterine cavity. It can be mostly in the pelvis, but also other parts of the abdominal cavity like bowels and um, bladder, also in the, in the wall of the uterus. And its pathogenesis is not completely understood and um, the most widely accepted uh, pathogenesis is the Samson theory of retro retrograde menstruation. You can see the, the retrograde menstruation, like the endometrial like cells are coming out through the patent tubes into the peritoneal cavity, they adhere, they proliferate and they form these typical lesions of the peritoneum also can see the uh, deep infiltrating nodule of the rectum. You all know that these um, endometriosis we have to face with uh, peritoneal inflammation. We have a high concentration of different uh, uh, interleukines, loads of VGF, uh, TGF alpha, beta, matrix metal portraises and all these inflammatory cells, macrophages and MK cells. So, what are the uh, major symptoms? All the patients are coming for dysmenorrhea. This is, this is the major complaint in, in endometriosis. 80% of all patients, they suffer of dysmenorrhea. We have also chronic pelvic pain. Uh, dyskesia, dysuria, and obviously infertility, which is, which is again a main complaint regarding the endometriosis. Uh, it's not moving anymore. I have a technical problem here. Can you help me with this? It's not moving the slide. Can you just double check this? Okay, just a second. So, as I told you, this this disease uh, can cause some. Um, not only only severe problem for the for the patients, but also it causes um, uh, also a burden for the for the society as well because the treatment of, of a patient with endometriosis can cost like uh, okay now it's perfect <laughs> can cost like uh, um, almost a thousand a hundred thousand euros per year. It, in Hungary and in, in Western European countries, as we know from the endocost study. Here, if you look at, if you look at the patients coming to see us, uh, we, we can see that patients with uh, chronic pelvic pain, uh, we found almost half of them as being diagnosed with endometriosis. And if, it's, if you look at the patients with infertility investigated, also almost up to 40% of them are suffering in endometriosis. It's, this is, I think, it's, it's a real burden for the whole society, not only for the patients suffering from, from endometriosis. So, what we have um, as... Um, as uh, as uh, phenotypes. So we have peritoneal implants, like 
very typical dentures lesions, lesions on the peritoneum, as I showed you before, and I will have later on some pictures. Also, ovarian endometriomas, which is also very typical, and we have the deep infiltrating disease, which is the most, most severe form of this, of this disease. Here on this picture you can see the, the most typical parts of, of deep infiltrating disease, the rectal vaginal space, the rectal and sigmoid junction, also bladder, appendix, cecum and ileum. So this is the most um, typical places for deep endometriosis. For the diagnosis, we have uh, we have uh, laparoscopic surgery as the gold standard. Um, for more advanced cases, a TVS MRI is also working, but the problem with, this, with, the, with endometriosis is the huge diagnostic delay we have to face. It's four uh, years almost in Hungary, but for instance in the UK it's eight years, in Germany it's seven. So from the onset of the symptoms till the still the definitive diagnosis, we have a huge diagnostic de delay because of the lack of non-invasive diagnostic testing. As you see here, this is a very typical um, um, laparoscopic aspect of, uh, of a little tiny vesicle here on the peritoneum and also there is an impression uh, in the peritoneal surface it's, we, we call it Allen Masters syndrome and this cannot be diagnosticized only by laparoscopy there's no way to see it uh, by, by uh, ultrasound or MRI so as I told you we have uh, peritoneal implants which is these are the typical Conscious lesions, they can be black or white, but you all know this, obviously. We have uh, ovarian cysts, the endometriomas, and the deep infiltrating disease. Like here, we see the rectum is completely infiltrated. For the histology, you all... For histology, I also brought you pictures. But I cannot show you. Which, oh, yeah, we have it. So we have endometrial-like stroma and also glands, endometrial glands in the topic endometrium. For me, endometriosis is a complex disease. That's why we need to treat it very uh, complex, uh, very in a, a complex manner. That's why we. We uh, have a, a center of excellence at our department at Samoa's University because we have, a, we have a, a, an outstanding surgical unit with, with colorectal surgeons and urologists and so on. We have also an ART department where we are, where we are able to treat all the infertility problems. But also, we, we have a psychologists, we have nutritionists, we have pain management specialists, and also we are working together with patient support groups in order to help our patients in a more holistic manner. Um, so how can we treat these patients? Ideally, uh, at the same time with the, with the diagnosis, we can, we can treat these patients surgically. We do the laparoscopy and we remove all the visible implants from the, uterine, uh, from the pelvis um, by laparoscopic surgery and also we are able to treat these people with uh, different medical treatments, GnRH analogs, progestins and combined oral contraceptive. Here you have a video I just brought you. Uh, so we do, we do laparoscopic surgery for deep endometriosis in, in my department. This, this is a new technical modality we use for the treatment of, of uh, endometriosis because here you have the nodule and we do a segmental resection and we extract the specimen through the rectum. So there is no need for a laparotomy in this way to, to extract the, the segmented 
the, the resected segment of the bowel, we it extracted two directum. So that's why we call this nose surgery. This, this the nose coming, is coming from the natural orifice specimen extraction. So as you see here, we, we introduce the anvil from a stapler or from a laparoscopic stapler to the rectum. Now we just take out the the segmented the resected segment to the rectum, and therefore we can avoid to perform a, lapar a laparotomy in this patient. Here we can close the rectal stump with an endo GIA, you see. It's, um, now it's closed. And uh, afterwards we create the, the end to end anastomosis. First we need to, to fix the end wheel in the, in the proximal rectum. You see, now we, we just put the stitch, this is a first string uh, stitch which is hand sewn by laparoscopy. And we fix the anvil here and now we can do the anastomosis since both both are closed, both proximal and distal ends of the rectum are closed, so we are ready to perform the anastomosis. And here is, you can see here this is coming from the from the anus. And now the anastomosis is created. So this is also a novel way of treatment of <coughs> the colorectal disease. But what I'm, why I'm here exactly is the is the medical treatment for for deep or for endometriosis. And we all know that we prescribed as a first-line treatment combined oral contraceptives for, for patients with endometriosis, but this, this in fact is almost always lacking in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the indication leaflet of these drugs. So it's kind of off-label uh, use of, of these pills. However, most of, most of guidelines and management um, algorithms, they always almost always recommend to use the first first line therapy the uh, OCs for endometriosis. When a patient enters in our office with with the complaints of endometriosis, we always start with the with the combined oral contraceptives, then we move for the diagnosis and the treatment by laparoscopy and afterwards also we advise them to take or either cyclically or or, or in, a, in a continuous regimen um, oral contraceptives. So these pills are the first line treatment in, in endometriosis for sure. But what kind of products shall we, shall we choose? Because there are so many. And uh, I think one of the best is, one of the best options is the combination of dianogest and ethyl estradiol uh, in order to obtain a very good cycle control and also a very good quality of life um, besides of good contraception. Why is it so good working? Because, because as you know, these, these uh, drugs, they have a combined effect. They have a central and a peripheral effect because if, as a central effect, they lower the FSH and LH concentration. Obviously, uh, this will end up in a reduction of the estrogen levels in the blood. And also, they have a peripheral, peripheral effect. And uh, uh, in this way, um, they also have a, a, a reductive effect on the estrogen concentration and the periphery. In addition, Dianagest has an anti-inflammatory effect and also a specific anti 
proliferative effect uh, with a peripheral progestational action. So this will end up in a good contraceptive, therapeutic and preventive effect of this molecule. And there are two studies showing that pyogenesis is a is a good combination. It's a good choice in the treatment of, of endometriosis. As you see here, patients before taking combined oral contraceptives uh, containing pyogenesis, they had almost 30 percent dysmenorrhea. And afterwards, after taking for for six months, these complaints they diminished. Also here. We have, we have uh, almost 190 patients taking uh, combined oral contraceptives containing uh, Dionysus and they ended up with 70% of, of uh, decrease in the dysmenorrhea uh, complaints. So, but, so Dionysus is okay, it's, it has a very good effect both on the periphery and centrally, but why do we need the, the ethinoestradiol? We need it because, because uh, it offers a good uh, cycle control. Therefore, with a, cycle, with, a, with a proper cycle control, our patients have better compliance and uh, they are able to, to take these drugs on the long term. And also, ethinoestradiol has an as an effect of increasing of, of the progestin efficiency. Here, the, a certain dose of, uh, of uh, ethanol estradiol will cause a moderate accumulation of dianogest and therefore it will increase the, eff the effectiveness of this molecule. So what is the advantage? of these combined pills to the to the, the dianogist only pills. Problem is that with the dianogist only pill we have no reduction of the LH and FSH therefore there's a higher chance to uh, functional cyst formation and also there is a higher chance a higher chance for sorry for the breakthrough bleeding. So, the importance of cycle control, I think, is very clear. It offers, offers a good comfort and a reliable contraception for our patients. At the same time, the bleeding duration, intensity, and, and absence of visual bleeding, and the frequency of intracyclic bleeding may be important for women choosing hormonal contraception. On this table, you can see that that, that just is a is a first generation S train. So I think it's it's a very safe and reliable uh, molecule, and also have a combined effect because it has um, a marked progestogenic action. It has a high oral bioavailability and also an effective contraception effect. Also. Uh, it's neutral metabolically and it's, it offers a secure long-term use. On this color table you have to concentrate only on the last line here, with red. You see, Dialogist has a lot of uh, progestogenic effect, anti-gonadotrophic uh, effect, also anti-androgenic effect, which, uh, which is also a very good news for our patients. And as I mentioned before, Dianogest has a good, good action on the endo, on, on the endometrial stromal cells, also endometrial epithelial cells, and also decreases angiogenesis. That's why exerts direct effects on the endometrium, which uh, uh, serves the basis for the proven efficacy in endometriosis, as mentioned before. Here, with regards of pharmacokinetics, you see that it has, um, it has a high um, bioavailability, orally taken. 
it has also a good half-life, it's around 8 hours. There is no active metabolite for dialingist and the steady state concentration will be reached at uh, 4 to 6 days. As a contraceptive effect, uh, the combination of the dynagist and ethyl is based on the interaction of various factors, uh, uh, the most important of which are seen as the inhibition of ovulation and the effect of on the endometrium. Let's see what's going on with the, with the return to uh, fertility. You can see on this diagram here that um, um, there, is, there is no, the administration of these oral contraceptives has no influence the conception rate and there is obviously a slight delay in regaining fertility during the first, during the first cycles. This table shows the cycle control. You can see that the length of the menstrual bleeding become shortened. The bleeding intensity gets lighter. The ratio of patients with excessive bleeding is reduced to one-fifth of the baseline value. This menorrhea disappeared almost completely during the observation period. This is also a very interesting diagram. You can see that dialogues combined with acetyl has a very important effect on the carbohydrate metabolism and it has the same as the other combined oral contraceptive pills but has a better, a better effect in changes in lipid metabolism regardless of the, of the uh, conventional versus extensional uh, of use. This is again a very important uh, study of Sarah Curie and co-workers and you can see that um, if we administer uh, co um, combined oral contraceptives after the surgical removal of an ovarian cyst, either specifical or prolonged for 24 months, the recurrence rate in the in the cyclical group is 14%, for the prolonged regimen it's 8%, while in the control group without any treatment it's 29%. This is a significant difference between, uh, between patients treated and, and non-treated controls. So this study will, will suggest that um, uh, the OCs are preventing the recurrence rate after the surgical removal of an endometrioma. As a conclusion, we can say that ethical estrotile and dialogens provide a good cycle control, reduce the influence of intramenstrual bleeding, the DNC intensity uh, and duration of menstrual bleeding, and the frequency of dysmenorrhea. Furthermore, uh, the effects of ethyl estradiol and dialogist combination on carbohydrate metabolism and hemostasis are similar to that of uh, other low-dose OCs and the changes in lipid uh, metabolism appear to be more favorable. Estrogens increase positive effects of the dialogist in, uh, in these combined OCs and combined oral contraceptives uh, for treatment of endometriosis related pain is safe and belongs to first line treatment according to the guidelines uh, on the diagnosis and treatment of endometriosis. Thank you very much for your attention.
дотримання регламенту особливо, звертаю увагу наступних доповідачів. Це дуже гарний приклад. У мене така пропозиція. Я не знаю, які плани має професор, де б Андрій Борисовича побачити. Може, ми зараз будемо задавати запитання або в письмовій формі. Добре, дякуємо вам, дякуємо. Слово для наступної.